So here I am on the apcc.org website and you can see it in the search bar up here and what will happen is after you put in apcc.org it will bring you to the home page and why are we actually starting with this website well one of the reasons is is that you as a citizen or an abutter on Peter's Pond you may want to understand what's going on with the pond health as far as cyanobacteria so one of the easiest ways to find that out is to go to this website and when you're on the home page what you'll do is you'll scroll down and right here you'll see cyanobacteria monitoring so you'll want to click on this and that will bring you to the cyanobacteria monitoring map now this is probably one of the easiest ways to get a quick update on what is going on with Peter's Pond and other ponds on Cape Cod and one of the ways I find Peter's Pond quite easily is by looking for actually Mashpee Wakeby Lake and this is Mashpee Wakeby Lake right here because Mashpee Wakeby is quite large and Peter's Pond is directly north of it so here we are fortunately it is the color blue and if you click right on the pond it will tell you some of the criteria here it will say the name of the pond the date that the sample was taken the town that the pond is in, the cyano status, acceptable, that is why the pond is colored blue. Uh, the water temperature on that day was 69.8 degrees. The sample was taken from the shore. And uh, there is no scum. Uh, recent activity, the previous test was taken on June 8th of 2022 and was also acceptable. Uh, town action, that is would be the Board of Health town action, and it was not applicable because there is uh, nothing serious to report, so there is no action. Uh, the dominant cyanobacteria that was found is, and I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, I think it's Doclosporum, and that is a uh, cyanobacteria that was prevalent. Uh, there may be others in the pond, but this happened to be the most prevalent one. Uh, but again, the levels of it are considered acceptable. And um, if you know anything about cyanobacteria, there is always some cyanobacteria in the pond. Um, it's a naturally occurring thing that has been happening for um, thousands and thousands of years. When we want to be concerned is when the levels get too high. Okay. So to understand a little bit more about the map, um, there is down here below, it tells you how you can use the map, uh, definitions of terms, uh, photo gallery of what cyanobacteria can look like, and um, what to do if you happen to see a bloom, who to contact. Um, and down here, there's also the uh, APCC's program methodology, which has changed a little bit from last year um, as far as how they issue warnings and restrictions. Uh, down here, there we go, restrictions advisories. And of course, this chart here that tells you the different colors of the pond. We had blue, acceptable, yellow, potential for concern, and red, which we just looked at, which is uh, use restriction is warranted. Okay, so that's the quickest way to get a quick checkup on uh, Peter's Pond and also where Nancy and I are monitoring Snake Pond. Uh, those are the two ponds that we have uh, volunteered to take samples from. The other thing that you may want to do while you're on this page is sign up for cyanobacteria alerts. Okay, so if you click on this, um, you can fill out this information and you'll receive an email if your pond is found to have toxic cyanobacteria bloom.